Welcome to video 17 in a series of introductory videos for the InventorCam CNC programming software. This video's topic is turning toolpaths, both inside and outside. So this is the main toolpath of the turning module in that we're going to use turning tools to do the outside profile and the inside profile. They actually program the exact same way. So we're going to do that right now. So I'm just going to right click on my last operation. I'll go to turning turning. We'll see that the interface is exactly the same. All we're really going to do here is cho just choose new geometry with the idea that we're going to turn the outside. So click on new geometry. You'll see that the blue represents the updated stock. So this part has already been faced as you saw in video 16. So the blue line is now right on that face. So we are now only concerned with turning the outside edge represented by this purple line. So I'm going to choose my geometry for turning from that line right there. I'm just going to choose that first chamfer. Now, typically I could go and choose all the individual edges as I go along, but there's actually a trick that we can click over here where we click on up to entity, and now it's waiting for me to choose the next entity in this chain. Not necessarily the next one in line, but the one here I can use as the last one. So let's say I want to end right here. As soon as I click on this chain right here, VentureCam is actually going to close the gap between them. It's going to use the relationship between those lines right there. So it just found all those edges, all those lines in between the one I just checked and the last one I checked. Once again, I just choose the geometry right from the target profile. It doesn't necessarily have to be complete. As we can see here, there's still that little bit of, uh, of the stock I need to turn. I don't have to do anything on this screen. I'm just going to click the green check mark to accept the chain click the green check mark to accept all the geometry. And now I'll just go to modify geometry. So I'll tell it to auto extend at the start. So that that basically went right to the completed face. If we take a look at that over there. So it starts right there. And in terms of the end, I'm going to tell it to auto extend as well, right to where the stock ends. So that little line right there has been created for me. Let's go to tool, select. And I'm going to choose my tool one, make sure it's mounted correctly. Levels, again, levels are really just safety distance. So it's a safety distance away from the turned stock. Technology is where you'll see the actual main control over this toolpath. So in this case, because turning can cover many different types of turning, we have the general section here where we choose that, that type of turning. In this case, we're doing external. But you'll see we can do external, internal, facing, and, and facing in the back. Uh, work type, we have the option of choosing rough, which actually has rough and finish, or we just go straight to finish and it removes the roughing tab. But I want to do both roughing and finishing, so I'll leave that there. So we'll go to the rough tab where we'll have control over this toolpath in terms of the parameters for roughing. Now, rough type, we have smooth and stairs. To understand what the difference between those two are, just look in the bottom left corner. There's smooth right now where it follows the exact contour and stairs where it'll actually do it in steps. So with this part, I'm gonna go with smooth. The step down of the, of the turning toolpath is 40 thou, as you see right there, in equal steps. Uh, but I also have adaptive step engaged as well. What that'll do is if there's any features that fall in between that 40 thou step, it'll add a turn profile, it'll add another pass just to account for that, that, um, that feature. This is just my retraction distance with each pass. We're doing a one-way cut. And if I wanted to, I could rough this on an angle. So I can actually just put that in there. We're doing roughing, so we'll leave 20 thou in the x direction, 8 thou in the z direction, and that'll be it for the roughing parameters. If I want to use the same tool to do semi-finishing or finishing, I have that ability. Now, by default, I have it set to ISO turning method, and it's going to mill or turn the rest material. Rest material is whatever was left behind by the previous toolpath. In this case, the roughing left behind these parameters right here. So this goes back to how turning an adventure cam works. It actually needs to see material. So as you would have seen when we set up the part initially in video 15, I put 10 thou on the OD, on the front and the back. That's so that we could actually put a facing toolpath, and here I could do a turning toolpath. Um, if I had left nothing in the roughing toolpath, then the finishing toolpath would not see any material and it would tell me that the finishing is empty. So in this case, the rest material is whatever was remaining behind. But 
if there was no remaining material and we just want to do an additional pass, just kind of like a cleanup pass, we can switch this to entire geometry and it will just run through the entire geometry selected in the geometry section. With a part like this, there is a groove. If my tool can't actually go in that groove, I can switch this under the strategy section to non-descending, meaning that it won't even try and do that groove. It'll just go straight across on that constant diameter. Break edges allows me to add a chamfer or a fillet to any internal or external corner inside of this geometry. So in this case, we have an external corner right here and an internal corner right here. It does not apply to the corner right here because if you recall, the geometry that I selected in this toolpath starts with this line. So it does not even recognize really that there is an edge right there or a corner. Link again is always the approach points, right safety corner and lead in lead out if you so choose. But in this case, I'm just gonna do a save and calculate. Okay, if it gives you an error of fee too large, that is simply just in my tool definition. So I'll just change this to something else, do a save and calculate, and we'll see the toolpath has included the chamfer and to the edge of the stock right there. And it did a finish pass as well. Also, my strategies where I told it to non-descend, it has skipped over the groove right there. Now, let's say we want to turn the inside. So I've already drilled out the hole and I want to do the internal bore. So I'll go right click on my last operation, add turning again, and I'm going to choose the turning toolpath. It'll work the same way. In this case though, the geometry I'm going to choose is the internal geometry, which is represented by that line right there for the ID. I'll click on the green check mark, click on this green check mark. Now, let's say the tool that I'm about to use is not long enough to go down the entire hole. I just want to turn it maybe halfway. As we saw before, I have the auto extend at the start so that it extends the geometry to the very end of the stock on this side. And this line actually goes right to the edge of the part, minus whatever face material I have on the back there. Now, in this case, I probably can't turn it all the way there. I need to trim it back. So under the end extension, rather than clicking on auto extend, I can actually put in values there. Now, if I wanted to go a little further, let's say I'll just put it in one inch, it extends it by one inch. Now, that's not what I'm looking for. I actually want to trim it back. So using conventions, I'll just go minus one inch. In this case, I believe it's minus 1.25. So if I kind of rotate this around, we can see that the toolpath now only goes a certain distance. I've actually trimmed it back by an inch and a quarter. Let me just do that again, inch and a quarter. So. We choose the geometry and then we modify it in the modify geometry section, not only to auto extend, but in this case, I could just trim it or extend it depending on what I need. Let's go to tool and we're gonna choose my internal boring bar. Make sure it's mounted correctly. Levels again, it's just the safety distance and technology. Since it notices where the geometry is that I selected, it now automatically uh, selected the internal turning toolpath. So now I'm ready to go to add my parameters. So if I go to rough, I use the same toolpath uh, parameters as before. 40 thou step down, retraction distance one way, the angle, how much I'm leaving behind, and I'll do finishing as well. So do a save and calculate. We'll take a look at that. So you'll see that it only uh, turned as much as I told it to from the right safety corner as well. <clears throat> so roughing outside, inside, the only thing left to do is maybe to do this groove. That is actually a separate toolpath, but it's programmed almost the exact same way. So I'm just gonna right click on my last toolpath. I'll go to add turning, grooving. So grooving, the interface will look the same as the turning. It almost works the exact same way, except what I'm doing here is I'm actually just gonna choose the geometry that I'd like to groove. In this case, just this bit here. So I'm just gonna grab that and this direction. So I could have used the up to entity as well, but there's only a few that I wanna grab. I'm just gonna grab those ones right there. 
So that is my groove geometry. You'll notice that it starts right there. The blue line represents the updated stock. That's already been turned. So that's why I'm only grooving that area there. Tool. I'm just going to add a quick grooving tool. Click on the green check mark, make sure it's mounted correctly. I'll go directly to technology, and you'll see that we have a similar layout as what we saw in turning. Outside grooving, inside grooving, face grooving, and back face grooving. Roughing, almost the same thing. We have the value of step over, how much we're leaving on the walls and the floor. The step down, we can make it a constant step down with a step down value, or we can make it just a single. It just plunges in and does what it needs to do. Semi finish, we have automatically turning in the finishing. Under groove parameters, because we're grooving, we'll have additional parameters for the fact that we're, we're doing a grooving. We have some, some plunging conditions, percentages of the feed and speed. And we also have the same break edges as before. So I'll do a save and calculate on that. Once again, the tool as defined might be too fast. So again, I'll just put in some slower numbers. So save and calculate, and we'll see we have a grooming operation right there. <clears throat> so any questions on this or anything else from AdventureCam, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, or you can stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this series of videos or on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.